Gospel of June the 8th, 2014, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are celebrating Pentecost, the coming down of the Holy Spirit, not only to the disciples, but to each and every one of us that are baptized. It is the promise of the Father that the Lord has reminded us that is coming. It is convenient for you that I go, because if I don't go, the paraclete will not come. But if I go, I will send the Advocate to you, and he will remain for you forever, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Life. It is so beautiful that the Lord decided to be resurrected on the first day of the week, on Sunday, just as the first day of creation, when God said, Bayomer Elohi, Jehior, by Hior. In Hebrew, he said, Let there be light, and light was there. And how he created it, the whole creation, was done by his word, his eternal Logos, his only begotten Son, through the strength of God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the keeper of life. So on the first day of the week, the Lord decided to make new everything again. And who are the first ones who see him? His disciples that are united there, fear, fearful of the Jews. But he is in the middle of them, not, notwithstanding that doors are locked up. He entered through his majesty, through his glorious body. He can enter anywhere. And he comes into the mist and says, Peace be with you. Now the peace that the Lord speaks about is not just the cessation of war. No. It is the wholenessness. It is that beautiful word, Shalom. That you be Shalom. That you be not only with peace, but happy, healthy, with life, with everything that you need and require, with everything that you desire that is good for you. That is the desire and the wish of God for you and me. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. He showed them his hands and his sight, the remnants of that passion, the crucifixion and death that he wanted to keep, to show for the love that he has for you and me, and also a reminder for us of the love and obedience that he has for his Father. So much so that he has deserved the forgiveness of our sins, yours and mine, with his very blood. The disciples that had gone through terrible tribulation, seeing afar his Lord being crucified and dying slowly on the cross, how mournful they must have been for the three days. And all of a sudden, they see the Lord in the mist, wishing them shalom. How great their joy must have turned to be. We can, say, we can ask with Paul, where is, O oh death, your victory? Where indeed? The resurrected Lord is no longer subject to death. And that life eternal is the one that he offers to you and me. Oh, happy time. Happy time that we are destined for life eternal, for happiness. The Lord again says, Peace be with you. And now this is very important. As the Father sent me, so I sent you. 
once we have met this resurrected Lord, the Lord of life, the true God, the true way and true life, we cannot stand within ourselves. We cannot be living in a little island of our own. We are called to become part of his family, to go about happily talking about this resurrected Lord that gives life forever, telling all our brothers that they should not be sad because they think they're dying, that if we believe in Jesus Christ and behave accordingly, that if we keep his commandments, there is eternal life for them too, as is for you and me. He says, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. Many of our brothers, the ones that have protested on the Reformed Church, deny this. They do not want to accept that the Lord invested his disciples as ministers of his sacraments always will be the action of Jesus himself, but only through those that he called to serve him in that particular way. And that is true. It is not good enough for you to go pray some place in the field and ask the Lord for forgiveness. It is far better if you go to the priest, to the Catholic priest, or to your Orthodox priest, priest if you have it, to go with him and ask for remission of your sins and confession. For then, when you hear those beautiful words, Ego te absolvo, I absolve you with the power of the church. And you are certain that you have been reconciled with God. Now, I would like to remain on this Receive the Holy Spirit. Today, I invite you to ask with all your heart, from the bottom of your heart, to ask our Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, your, your Son, we ask you that you send again your Holy Spirit to all of us. Veni, Creator Spiritus, mentes tuorum visita, in ple superna gracia, que tu creasti pectra, quidiceris paraclitus, donum Dei Altissimi, fons vivus signis caritas et spiritalis functio, Tu septi formis munere, digitus paterne dextere. Tu rite promisum patris, sermone ditans vature. Accende lumen sensibus, infunde amorem cordibus. Infirma nostre corporis, virtute firmans perpeti. Ostem repelas longius, pacemque dones protinus. Doctore sicte previo, vitemos dom, obne noxium. Que Dios nos lo conceda, hermanos. Dios les bendiga.